Hi, welcome to my second channel and I hope you are well. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about training yourself for your part two as well as training for your part three. So when you are training for your part two, you should think of training your mind and yourself for your part three also. Because your part two is all about driving and when you become a driving instructor, what is your job? Your job is to teach learners learn to drive. But how are you going to do that? You will have to recognize the problem and you will have to talk about the problem. You will have to explain about the problem. You will have to see what the danger of the problem and explain your learners to learn and what is the risk of the problem. So when you are training for your part two, what I want you to do is think of your part three at the same time. Because when you go and do your part three test, it is all about teaching. You're going to have a learner or someone sitting here driving and you're going to have a task to teach your learners something, a subject. And the best training for that, I say, is when you are training for your part two. So don't just go and concentrate on your driving. Part two is all about driving. But remember, you're driving. Think of the theory. Think of the subjects. Think of the instructions you're going to give for your part three. Think how you're going to teach your learners. On the situation that you face on the road so i'm going to go and drive and talk on situations so that you get the understanding of learning to drive or training yourself for your part two as well as thinking and training yourself and your mind for your part three that's what you should be doing i've already said this on my other videos in the channel and i will tell you again because the best way you're going to become a driving instructor is to get to know the driving side you know everything about driving your driving becomes first class meaning you become a good driver with the theory knowing everything about the situations that you face on the road that way you will know how to pass the message on when you are teaching your learners so when you are training for your part two think of your part three because your part three is all about teaching so when you are driving and you are talking about situations you are talking about everything you see. What's happening is helping you to recognize the problem, get to know the theory of the problem. And also when you are talking, you are training how to give instructions, how to talk. Because many, when they become a driving instructor, they become short of words or sentences. They see a problem. By the time they talk about the problem, the problem is gone because the car is not stopping. Remember when you're teaching, your learner will be driving. So you see a problem, you recognize the problem. By the time you have the words and the sentences for you to explain, the problem is gone because the car is moving. So when you are training for your part two, if you talk in every situation, what's happening? What you are doing is you are helping yourself to speak quickly, find the right words, find the sentences. So hopefully this video should help you to understand how to train yourself for your part two, as well as your part three at the same time. Let's go and do some driving. So obviously, as you move off, make sure the blind spot every time. Every time I move off, I always remind about the blind spot because blind spot is something you will fail if you don't check. So make sure every time you're moving off, your blind spot. You know how to do it. You know how to pass the message on to your learners. I'm going to go left at the end. Mirror, mirror, signal left. So I'm thinking, mirror, mirror, signal left. What am I going to do here? I'm going to stop. It's a giveaway line. I can't see anything. First gear. If it's a manual car, if it's automatic, you don't need to change gear. Edge forward. I can't see anything. I can't see anything. It's called peep and creep. So what is peep and creep? You peep and you creep. You look and you go forward and then when it's safe for you to go, that's when you go. There's a car coming. I'm going to wait here. I'm not going to go too close to the pavement, not too close to the parked car and stick my nose out a little bit. Why? So then others could see that I'm going and also easier for me. So I could see who's coming. Here I can't see anything. There's a car here waiting. I'm going to go here and I'm going to wait. 
and then I'm going to see if it's safe to go. I'm looking at the mirrors. So as you are driving, as you are training for your part two, think for your part three. Think how, what's happening here. So the car in front, I go part car, part car. Where should I position in the middle? What could happen? Door could open. The car in front could break. Maybe they want to go left or right. So I'm thinking all that. The car on the right was signaling to come out. Did I see that? So those things, as I'm driving, is helping me to train myself for my part two as well as it's going to help me for my part three. Because all those things I'm recognizing now is going to happen when I'm training my learners. It's going to go right at the end. Signal right. Car in front also wants to go right. What about the position? Is my position okay? What about their position? I need to go a little bit more, a little bit more. I'm going to be on my side of the road because others want to come into my road. I'm going to go right. I'm going to wait. I'm going to put the handbrake on because it looks like I'm going to wait here for a while. So I put the handbrake on and I'm going to wait, prepare my car to move. That's what I'm doing. And that's what I will be teaching my learners how to stop on the road like here and how to move off. So if I'm thinking now, I will know how to teach my learners. So now it's okay, I'm gonna go now. It's fine, traffic light is green. Anyone crossing the road, first thing mirror, second gear. What else can I see here? The van wants to come out, looks like. Okay, they're, they're coming, what are they gonna do? I'm gonna see what they do, they want to come. Did I recognize that? My learner, did they recognize it? When I'm teaching, What questions do I ask my learners? Did they see that car coming out? What level are they in? Am I, am I giving them guided? Or am I giving them questions? Maybe they know how to drive the car. So if there's a van coming out at that time, and my learner who knows how to drive the car, did they see that van? How do I know? What kind of questions should I be asking? You see? So when you talk on situations, when you're driving, what you're doing is you're helping to find the words at the right time, find the sentences at the right time. That's the, teaching is all about knowing what to say at the right time. Here, there's a bus lane here. Where should I be? I should be here. What's the distance from the car in front? Am I okay? Okay. If I'm not okay, how am I going to teach my learners? Are they okay or not? So always talk, all the mirrors. So if I stop for a while before I go mirror, 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 why? Who's behind? Cyclist, motorcyclist, okay? These are the things around. Remember, the problem are not just coming from the front. It's also coming from around you, behind, on the side, the problems, okay? So make sure your learners, including yourself, if you know that you are looking at the mirrors, you are looking at the side mirrors before you move off, if you stop for a while, you got that habit on your teaching naturally, that's going to come. You don't even have to think naturally because you are training now and then when you become, when, you, when you've done your part two and then hopefully when you do become a driving instructor or you go to your, for your part three, things just going to come really quickly, really naturally because you've been training yourself. You've been talking on every situation. I need to go to the left lane. I'm in the left lane now. There's nobody there and I'm going to go left. As I go in, any problem, there's no problem. Mirror, change gear. And if it's a manual car, uh, automatic, like I said, you don't need to change gear. Look at the mirror every five to eight seconds. That's the habit that I'm doing now. So when I'm teaching, I will remember to see if my learners are doing the same. If I've got the habit, I don't have to think. Naturally, I will see if my learners are doing it. If I don't train myself, what's going to happen? Do I have enough space here? The car in front, what are they doing? Traffic light is red. So what am I going to do? Mirror first. The red car, are they going to come out? This van, is it going to move? Could happen. That's why you should be thinking. That's why you should be teaching when you're teaching your learners. The car in front, here. I'm going to stop here. I'm break on. Neutral. Rest my feet. I'm just going to give myself a little break. Remember, having those little breaks, it helps you to recharge helps you mentally, helps you physically, okay? So make sure when you stop for a while, just give yourself a little break, 
okay? I'm back on neutral, both hands on the wheel, and just wait and just relax and think what's happening. Before I go, what am I going to do? Look at the mirror, look at the mirror, look at the mirror, and then I'm going to go. So those things you are doing, and then if you got the habit of, habit of doing that, naturally, it's going to come on your teaching. I'm going to close the gap around here, okay? So what's the distance should I be keeping from the car in front? Enough for me to go around. So if they break down now, do I have enough space for me to go around? If I don't, then I'm in trouble. They can't move because they got a problem. I can't move. What's going to happen to the car behind? Maybe they're very close as well. Then I'm stuck. Okay? So always keep the distance from the car in front enough for you to go around if they um, break down. Okay? You don't want to be too far because you're going to be making the gap, uh, the traffic too long. You don't want to be too close so that you can move off if they break down, okay? So these are the things you are thinking when you are driving, when you are um, doing your part two, when you are training for your part two. Remember, to become a driving instructor, obviously you've been driving for a while, otherwise you can't become a driving instructor. So we know you know how to drive the car or you've been driving for a while for you to do your part two just go and drive watch these kind of videos on youtube and just go and train yourself just go and study go and train you got a car you have your own car just go and study go and learn in your own time just go and drive in your own time and talk on every situation like i'm doing now this red car is it going to come or are they going to come or with the person walking are they going to cross the road? Do they have any dog with them? Do they have any child with them? What could happen? If there's a dog, there's no lead, what could happen? There's a car on my left. Sorry, there's a road on my left. Any car coming from that road? No, there could be. Pedestrians walking, speed is 20, traffic light is green. What could happen? It could change. Okay? There's zigzag line here. What does it mean? There's um, here, yellow zigzag. What does it mean? School here. Are you recognizing those things when you're driving? So the point of this video, the message I'm trying to give you in this video is for you to train for part two, for part three. Okay, I always link it. I always believe that becoming a driving instructor is all about your driving. It's all about making a habit of your own driving, drive the way you should be driving. If your driving becomes first class, if your driving becomes like the book is saying, and if that becomes a habit for you, you don't even have to think. You're going to become a good instructor because naturally things are going to come from your mouth. The word is going to come out. The sentence is going to come out. Your thinking is going to be the way it should be because that is your habit. That is what you've been doing. That is how you've been training. You won't be, you'll be surprised. Obviously, you've been driving for many years, three to four years, you've been driving to become a driving instructor. So you know how to drive the car. Now, on, for you to become a driving instructor, you will be surprised the faults or the bad habits that you have on your driving. Over the years, you picked up crossing hands, putting the clutch down too early, not looking at the mirrors, crossing hands, putting the clutch down too early, coasting, all those things you're going to have bad habits on. You need to get rid of those for you to become a driving instructor. So that way, things become natural for you. Everything becomes natural. You don't even have to think. So your driving needs to be refined. Your driving needs to be good. And the way you do that is get rid of your bad habits. All those bad habits that you have or you've been, I'm going to go right actually next. There's a person here. Are they going to cross the road? But before they come, we'll be gone. Okay, they're not crossing the road. So I'm gone. Here, what is the sign saying? They have priority because we've got the giveaway line. Also, the sign is saying they've got the priority. Did I know that? Okay, I'm going to go left here. Mirror, mirror. Signal left. Okay, slow the car. Okay, look into the road. Look ahead, look into the road. Any problem? There is a car coming. But do I have the space to go? Yes, I do. Brilliant. Okay. Okay. 
Next road, we're going to go left mirror, mirror, signal left. Slow the car, slow the car. Think of your gear if you are learning in a manual car. If it's automatic, obviously, like I said, you don't have any gear. So think the car that you're driving, the test that you're going to give. We're going to go left at the end. Can I give my test on automatic? You can. Teaching will depend on the license that you have. If you have a manual driving license, then that means you could teach manual and automatic. If you have an automatic license, then you could only teach automatic. It doesn't matter what type of car you give your lesson uh, test on for your part two. So if you hold a license on manual, you could give test on automatic. But then you could teach manual too because you've got the license for manual. I'm gonna go right here. Mirror, second gear. Okay, where do I position? There's a car coming, there's a parked car. What could happen? Door could open. I need to make sure I have the enough space for me to go. The red car here. Is anyone coming from the other side? Do I have the space to go? Are they gonna open the door? There's people walking. Are they gonna cross the road? Those things, quick, quick thinking is only is going to come if you practice. Otherwise, you're going to see the problem. You don't know how to talk. You don't know. You don't have the words. You're looking for the words. And by the time you say something, you're already gone. I had that problem in the beginning uh, before I, as I was becoming a driving instructor. Before my part three, I struck a problem finding the right word at the right time, finding the sentence. What I did for me to be good on those things is I used to go out every night for an hour, every night, and just talk on everything that I see. I used to go and talk. Sometimes it didn't even make sense. I used to just go and talk on everything that I see, everything I see. I mean, here, I've got a bike, delivery, car kind of fun, people crossing. I got giveaway line coming up. I've got, can I see who's coming? It's a crossroad. There's a mini coming up. The car, in, the bike in front wants to go right. Do I have the space to go? Okay, now here, do I have the space to go? The, the white car, are they going to come? Okay, I'm going to go right, mirror, mirror, signal right. So just talk everything. If it doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. In the beginning, just talk on everything you see. And then eventually, once you are used to of talking, everything you see, it'll become natural. You will be able to find the words and the sentences in time. Remember, you need those for your part three. Or when you become a driving instructor, your job isn't to drive. What is your job? Your job is to teach. And how are you going to teach? You are going to teach by saying the right words, the right sen sentences at the right time. If you know the problem, you see the problem, you recognize the problem, but you don't know what to say, you're not a good instructor, right? So I hope this video helps. I'm just trying to give you, I'm trying to find ways how to help you to become a driving instructor. And I'm just giving you the best way I think I could help. And I always link part two with part three because your driving relates to your part three. The way you drive is the way you're going to teach. So I always link up the part two with part three. So when you are training yourself for your part two, make sure you are thinking of your part three. Make sure you know your part three is ahead. What do I need to do on my part three? Your part two is linked with your part three. So I hope this video helps. And um, I hope you pass your part two if it's coming up. And pass your part three also to become a driving instructor. I truly wish you all the best. I hope this video helps. If it does, please do give a thumbs up. Also, please do make a comment what you think of the video. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Hope to see you again on the next video. Bye for now.